Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking rotating trail text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine at a duration of about 10 seconds. Press OK. Once we've got that, we need to come over here and create a new text layer. So I'm just going to write our word here, which is going to be create. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's the font that I want, which is railway and I'm choosing the black version of it. And the only other thing that I've done here is I've just decreased the spacing in between the characters. So once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to move the anchor point to the middle of that text. So all we have to do is just press control and double click this icon over here and that will move that anchor point there. Once we've got that, we need to align it to the center of the composition. So now we can start with the animation. So the two things that we need to animate, the first one is gonna be scale. So you have to press S for scale. Now I'm gonna hold shift and press R for rotation. Now once you've got that, we're gonna hit the stopwatch for rotation. We're gonna to move to the end of the timeline and I'm just going to change this value to one. So that is one revolution of the rotation keyframes working. And we're gonna do something similar for scale. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for scale. I'm just gonna bring it down to let's say 80 and I'm just gonna to move to the end of the composition and I'm gonna bring that up to let's say 170. Now you just wanna scrub through and when it rotates, you don't want the text to be off that composition. So if it's too big, change your scale settings. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all those keyframes and I'm gonna right click and I'm going to easy ease those keyframes. And then what I'm gonna do is with all of them selected, I'm gonna press on the graph editor. Now make sure that you're in the speed graph editor. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag and highlight those two parts over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it closer to the middle. Now, you don't wanna go all the way because you don't want like a really big peak in the middle, just a pretty small peak like that. So you can play around with some of these settings, try and get them even on both sides. And what it looks like is something like this. So it starts off pretty slow. It gets to that peak. It then speeds up a little bit and then it kind of slows down. So the last thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna animate the text. So I'm, I've been using this uh, free plugin which is called Motion Type Light. And basically, it creates the animation for me. So it starts off by creating that cool looking text animation and then it also ends with the text falling as well. Now you can change some of these settings if you want, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So once you've added your scale and rotation keyframes, you wanna just bring back this rotation keyframe to probably about eight seconds, just so that you give the animation a bit of time to fade out. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to pre-compose that. So I'm just gonna call that fill. Once we've got that, then I need to press Control D to duplicate that and we are going to call that duplication trail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to search for the effect called Echo and I'm gonna change a few settings here. The first thing I'm going to change is this value to 0 0.005. I'm going to change the number of echoes to let's say 50 and I'm going to change the decay to 0.94. And so now I've had to lower down the resolution because my computer really can't handle the amount of echoes that we're gonna have. So to keep adding to that, what I need to do is I'm gonna look for the effect which is called Gaussian Blur. And I'm just gonna add a bit of blur in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some color by looking for an effect called Colorama. And so now when we've got Colorama in on here, quite doesn't look the best. What we need to do is we need to change the input phase and get the phase from, we're gonna change that to alpha. We're gonna change the output cycle. I'm just gonna pick, let's say ramp blue. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click on this point over here and I'm going to import my colors from Color Hunt. So I'm gonna use this red over here. So the RGB values are 255, 81 and 81. So all I have to do is put that back into Colorama. So the values were 255, 
81 and 81 and I can always add that to my custom colors. So that's gonna be my color, I'm gonna press OK. Now it creates a really nice red on that background. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to come over here to modify and we're just gonna uncheck modify alpha and we're also gonna come down to masking and we're gonna uncheck the composite over layer. So now that I've got that, it's looking pretty cool but we can add more to it. So the next thing that we're gonna add is we're gonna create a duplicate of that trail. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of Colorama and then what we are going to do is we're gonna change some of the settings over here. So the first thing that we're gonna change is we're going to change the echo time to negative 0.01. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump up the number of echoes to let's say 150. We're gonna drop down the starting intensity to let's say 0.15. And we are also going to bump up the decay to 0.98. And so now we've got some really cool kind of effects happening, but there's no color. So we're gonna add in a gradient ramp. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the, my colors from Color Hunt and put them in here. So now if you preview that, or if you look at what the trail actually does, you can see that there is a longer trail that is being affected by this slower trail and the starting intensity, it makes it look a little bit different. So what we need to do now is, now we just need to pretty much finish it off. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add our background layer. So I'm just gonna call this background and I'm just going to make it black and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of my composition. And then I'm gonna search for my gradient ramp and then I'm gonna get my colors again from Color Hunt. Cool, so now I've got my gradient in there and it's looking all good. So now that I've added my background, the next thing that I need to do is I need to create an adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna rename this adjustment layer glow and I'm going to search for the effect glow. So I'm just gonna change a few settings. I'm going to drop down the threshold to let's say about 40%. I'm just going to bump up the glow radius to about 75 and then I'm going to bring down the glow intensity to let's say maybe 0.3 something like that. So now we've added a nice glow, but we can't just stop there. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to search for another adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna call this noise and we are going to add some noise to this. So we're just gonna put maybe let's say 10% noise. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to create another adjustment layer. And this one is going to be called blur. So I'm going to look for an effect which is called Fast Box Blur. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put that to let's say 0.9 and I'm just gonna click this button over here to repeat edges on the pixels. And so now if you preview that, now we've got that real kind of retro vibe and I think that looks actually pretty good. So the final thing that we can add here is we can add some dust as well. So we're gonna create a new solid and we're gonna call this dust. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look for an effect which is called fractal noise. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring up the contrast to let's say 900. I'm going to bring up the brightness to let's say negative 400. And then I'm gonna go into the transform settings and I'm just gonna change the scale to let's say 10. And on top of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add another fast box blur. So I'm just gonna bring down the blur radius to let's say one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click repeat edge pixels. So now we just need to animate this. So all we have to do is open up the evolution options, hold alt and click on the stopwatch for random seed. And then all you have to do is just write time times 10. And so now if you've done that correctly, you will see that these things will move around. So the final thing that we have to do here is we just have to change it to let's say screen. And so now if we kind of preview that, let's drop it down to like, let's say a quarter. So now we've got a bit of noise happening. We've got a bit of dust and speckles that happen. 
and it's looking pretty cool especially when we export it so the final thing we're going to do here is we're just going to pre-compose it and i'm just going to call it pre-comp and we're just going to add another scale in effect so i'm just going to press s for scale hit the stopwatch and i'm just going to move to the end of the timeline and i'm just going to scale it in to let's say 115 and again you just want to go back and when it does do the rotation you want to make sure that the rotation the text does not go off the screen so I think that looks pretty cool and yeah, that's about it for this lesson. So anyways guys, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.